proud of the offering this morning. Anything that wasn't in the envelope was five dollar bills. Finally, somebody got the message. Terrific. Hello. <laughs> that was good. Whoa. That was good. <laughs> Most of you spend that much money on soda pop during the week. <coughs> Most of you spend that much money on a pack of cigarettes. Sorry, Bill, I didn't mean to tell on you. I don't smoke. You don't? Oh. Just when I get mad. Most of you spend, some of you spend that much money on chocolate. Uh -oh. I'm going to get you sooner or later. You're on I'm trying to work on you a little bit. Now you're meddling, not preaching. That's <laughs> <laughs> what well, I was getting ready to say. Even in my thoughts. That might get dangerous. There is no question <laughs> that there is not something during the week that I buy, that I don't need, that I could do without. Yep. Why is that? We just enjoy spending the money we don't have. I don't know. Gifts of human, isn't it? It's called the flesh. Yep, that's what I'm talking about, the human. Ephesians, no, Philippians, and we've just got a few more lessons to go, perhaps. We're in verse 10 through verse 12. Verse 10 through verse 12. But... I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again wherein ye were also careful but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want for I have learned in whatever I am therewith be content. I know how how to both how to abase and I know how to abound. This would be interesting. Everywhere and in everything I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. It's always a joy to come, speak to the study of the Word of God. Before coming to some conclusion, let me draw your attention to verses 10 through verse 19 is the core of the mess is the core of the text in working our way through it. This is a unit of thought from verse 10 through verse 19. And as we examine the meaning of the Word of God, I believe you're going to find this extremely practical in your life as I have found it in my own contentment. Contentment is a rich word. Contentment 
not only is it a rich word, but it is a biblical word. In fact, the Bible has a lot to say about this matter of contentment. Luke chapter 13, excuse me, Luke chapter 3 and verse 14 says, Be content with your wages. Now, wait a minute. You must not have belonged to the union. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6, Paul says, But God on this, <coughs> with contentment, goodness, is great gain. Verse 8, And having rooted and clothing, let us be dark with content. Hebrews 13, 5, Be content with such things as you have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake you. The Bible not only identifies contentment as a virtue, but speaks of contentment as a command. You ought to be content with whatever you have. Contented with food and contented with clothing. With your wages, content with because you understand that a total, infinite, supernatural, resourceful God will never leave you or forsake you. I think the principle is this. Don't store up stuff because you're afraid you won't have anything. It's not that God doesn't want you to have 90 shirts. It's not that God doesn't want you to have food in your house. But the idea is don't have the, it has the idea in it if you're thinking that you cannot make it in life without all that stuff. If God provides the income and God provides the means, I think those things are okay. Contentment is a virtue. It's a command. Frankly, most people don't experience it. Most Christians don't experience it to the decree that God desires for us. We tend to be very discontented people. The theory is, the more you have, the more you become discontent. If that's true, then this must be the most discontent society that has been in our history. We are called to contentment. We are called to be satisfied. We are called to say, it's enough. Now, one more hot wheel would be okay. But if you're storing up hot wheels for reasons that are not biblical and I don't know that it's biblical to have a hot wheel <laughs> come to think of it but if you can't be content without all that stuff you're in trouble if you can't quit then there's a problem most of us don't experience that Paul did and Paul was a satisfied man. He was a contented man. Now reading, as I read briefly earlier in the lesson, it becomes clear that this man, Paul, knew what it meant to be content. He was a satisfied man. Yep. And if we look very closely, 
at this portion of scripture, he is sharing his contentment. And we find the secret of our own as well. Now let's look at the context. Most of us, when writing something, we deeply love. We include thanks for something they have done for us. Paul, who loved the Philippians, Philippians, dearly wanted to express at some length his gratitude to them for their kindness. And I think that we all should express gratitude to those who have shown us kindness. Yeah, yeah, they do. They loved him from the beginning and had opportunity to show it by sending Epidatus to Paul with some gifts to meet his needs, money, clothes, and food, and some things that he needed. In these nine, ver ten verses, is Paul saying thanks for what they sent. And, fi and a final statement is that he said thanks. 